the pilot for Ray was so well developed and it was so it the other the thing I've always respected about the show was like you guys had your own pace yeah which must have been a decision yeah the plot it wasn't that plotty oh no and it was in the golden age of friends and Seinfeld when it was like plot 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 how did you we're going guys, the other way how did you guys did you specifically decide that because what was your experience up to that as a writer terrible sitcoms you wrote on terrible sitcoms of course my first job when i came in 1989 was the robert mitchum sitcom wow i mean robert mitchum uh from out of the past that's right literally the movie out of the past okay you ready for this <laughs> uh-huh. this is Absolutely true. And winds of war. I mean, this guy's not a kid, has no comedy in his. Arrested for pot smoking in the 50s. There you go. That makes Went him Went to sound... jail. Yes, but that makes him, he was just tough a. Tough guy. Yeah, he was a tough guy. Film noir, I mean, this. Yeah, watch like a Cape great Fear. what he was. Yeah, the original Cape Fear. That's right. He was the De Niro part yes. in the original Cape Fear. So yes. for people who don't know who he was. Also, uh, who's De Niro? I'm young. I don't know who, I mean, but it, we're talking about a film noir guy who should not have had a sitcom. Absolutely not. But that's what was happening when I got to town. Yeah. Remember TV movies? Yeah. So there was a TV movie. Robert Mitchum plays a homeless man in Central Park living in a refrigerator box. Three divorced, uh, not divorced, three recently orphaned children find him and say, will you pretend to be our grandpa so we're not split up into separate foster homes, in exchange for which you'll have a roof over your head. Okay. This movie, which was classified as a warmody, (laughs) Uh not a comedy, not a drama, just a lukewarm bath of shit. So like nothing, something you watch and go, oh, that's nice. I've also heard the term charmity. A charmity. That's yeah. perfect. So this thing, this TV movie was the highest testing anything in NBC history. Yes. This movie tested higher than Cheers, tested the, higher than the Cosby show. Higher the than the 80s. song. Ding, ding, ding. People, it went better than, <laughs> did better than ding, ding, ding. Did better than the NBC chime. <laughs> they couldn't leave it alone. It had to be a sitcom, right? They called it a yeah. backdoor pilot. Yeah. This was a movie. Good or bad, it was a movie. They did a four camera in front of a studio audience sitcom. This is what they made out of it. I'm hired as half a staff writer with a partner. We Got just it. had gotten a town. This is what we get put on. Now, you what, were an actor before, right? I did some acting. I went to school for theater. And, you know, when you graduate with a BFA degree and move into New York, the whole world is open to you. And how, so you're right. Yeah. People love, can't wait for you to get there. What year was that? 1981. So you're in New York for seven, eight years. That's right. Doing what? Odd jobs. I was a security guard at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Mm -hmm. Uh, I worked a graveyard shift at one point and I was fired because I couldn't stay awake. And they found me asleep on a 300 year old bed in an exhibit. Sure. Not as, as uncomfortable. As one does. And they, they don't like you touching the art, let alone sleeping but, on yeah. it. So that was humiliating. You woke up and said, it that. works. <laughs> <laughs> it's still good. It still works. Is that? I thought that was the job. When I was fired, the head of security said, listen, to me, it's a bed. And to you, it's a bed. But to them, it's a work of art. <laughs> You're fired. God damn it. That's funny. So uh, I'm out. And so now did I, you feel I, like... When you when you became a writer, did it feel like a, a re- resignation? Did it feel like a no, failure? Or no, felt like- it felt like, oh my God. So so for six, seven years, I'm struggling, trying to make it and taking, and I'm not working as an actor like ever. I would get a little part in a Shakespeare thing for no money in an in a abandoned warehouse somewhere. My parents would come. They were so sweet. They would come with their friends. And the thing is unheated in the winter and I look out and they're the only people there, these six people, yeah. my parents and their friends in overcoat shivering, waiting for my three lines. I mean, that's yeah. love. Yeah. Terrible, terrible, managed a deli, uh, bartended, all the odd jobs that you have. And then some friends of mine wrote a show for ourselves to be in, which is 
if I tell everybody this is the yeah. only way to make it. I agree. You literally have to write your own ticket. Yeah. You know, nobody's going to write jokes for you, Neil no. Brennan, to, for you no. to go up on stage. No. You have to do the hard work yeah. of making something yourself, whether it's yeah. comedy, act, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that takes at the same time, my friend Alan Kirschenbaum from high school, his father was Freddie Roman. Do you know who that yeah. was? I saw from the uh, Friars Cat's Club. Skills on Broadway. You saw him. Or Cat's, yeah. Yes, Cat, that's yeah. exactly right. And he was dean of the Friars Club. Yeah. Did you ever go? Yeah, absolutely. Fun, right? Yeah, great. Uh, okay, so he was my buddy from high school. He said, You should write. I said, Why? He goes, You're funny. I'm like, uh, Okay. And yeah. he goes, let's write a screenplay. I don't know anything about writing a screenplay. He goes, I've been writing a little. I, I think I know the structure. We write a screenplay. We sell it instantly to HBO for $70,000 in 1988. Impossible. I, I went from eating tuna fish for dinner yes. as an actor to eating whatever I wanted as a yes. writer. For three weeks. Yes. Uh, because that's how that's long, how long it lasts. lasts. <laughs> But then somebody had seen me in the play that I wrote with my friends. They said, you come to L.A., you will never stop working as an actor. I packed a bag, moved to L.A. I never started working as an actor. Uh -huh. But I had this writing thing. I got a partner. Alan was already working on a sitcom himself. So I got another partner, my friend Oliver Goldstick, whose plays I had been in at Columbia Grad School. We write a spec script, and we get hired immediately on this Robert Mitchum sitcom. Sure. Robert Mitchum sitcom now. I brought you up to speed. Picture a Brady Bunch looking set. It's empty. This is the first shot of the pilot. Ding dong. You hear ding dong. You hear offstage. I'll get it. It's Robert Mitchum. <laughs> Door opens. Robert Mitchum comes out wearing an apron and a, stops at the kitchen table, adjusts the flowers, and then gets the door. Show is dead right there. Yeah. Because you've emasculated uh -huh. this Mr. tough Masculine, guy and yeah. you've taken out Whatever humor was possible, which yeah. is a gruff guy having to have yeah. three little kids and a dog. Yeah. I swear the premise might have worked if allowed to be a tiny bit rougher. Do you rougher. remember looking at rehearsal and going, we're dead? Absolutely, because I came from theater. And could I you understood have it. did you pitch, we might be dead Absolutely. if we don't change that? I said, you can't. Why does he have an apron on? Why is he? you not letting him be? Even my three sons knew that when you put William Demarest in the role of Uncle Charlie and he's gruff and nasty, it contrasts with the goody-goody thing you're trying to do. And yeah. at least there's a chance at a laugh. Yeah. Not here. They Because the worst word in this business is likable. Right. And they said, you got to make him likable. Yeah. When they hit me with that on Raymond, because I got that note on Raymond. Yeah. I said, can I ask you something? Who in your family is likable? Yeah. It's just not. It, yeah. This is the real world. You want to show the yeah. real world? If we have anything, it's this yeah. shit is real. Yeah. By the way, the other writers on the show, I was the, like the youngest one. I was the only one who knew who Robert Mitchum was. We just talked about his yeah. career. The older writers on the show didn't know who he was. I'm like, you got to come over. Uh, uh, Night of the Hunter. Yeah. You ever see that? Yeah. I, I thought, was he an out of the past or maybe I'm thinking Absolutely out of the past. right. Okay, yeah, yeah. You know? Night of the Hunter, yeah, yeah. But Night of the Hunter is one of the best movies ever made. It's odd. I. It's pretty weird. Well, it's a little surrealistic. Yeah. But it's also beautiful. Yeah. And it's also scary as hell. Yeah. Ultimate good and evil. Yes. Everybody watch this movie. Night of the Hunter, the only film written by James Agee, the only movie directed by Charles Lawton. Yes, Charles Lawton, one of the greatest voices ever. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. An actor. Yeah, like a one of the greatest physical voices Absolutely ever. Absolutely right. So I have the writers over before the show starts to show him who we're dealing with here. <laughs> and they watch it, and because it is a little weird and a little surrealistic, they scoff at it, they laugh at it, and as they're leaving, they go, great movie, Phil, like you're an idiot. And I just said, oh, oh, I'm in a world of shit. Right. This is not going to be easy. And the show was canceled after seven uh, episodes. The little girl on the show, I think she was, she was the older sister. She was 14. Her name was Juliette Lewis. And she That's went funny. from that terrible show directly into the remake of Cape Fear. Amazing. Juliette Lewis one of the best actresses alive. Incredible. I saw her recently and 
like I knew her from Twitter, and I was like, you, yes. you know, you're one of the best. And she was like, oh my God, I think I'm going to have her on because she's so, she's, she's a- so fucking interesting. You almost can't put her in shit because she's, will be so much better than everyone. But a movie actress. Yeah. Also, not someone no, meant she, for multi camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Ding dong. Ben Savage, who Little ben went Savage. on, I think he now is running for. Con- yes. Yes. Uh, okay. So then we're, okay. So then you wrote for. You started rising up the ranks a little bit, right? So next show was Baby Talk. You know what that was? Don't remember. Baby Talk was the TV version of the movie Look Who's, Look Who's Talking. Yeah, I remember that. So yes. you're going to love this. The way they made Look Who's Talking was they filmed hours and hours of baby footage, and then writers would come in, and when it looked like the baby was making a face, they'd write a joke that corresponded with the face that I guess it was Bruce Willis could yeah. VO. Yes. Okay. Bruce Willis as the voice of Mikey. Help! Help! Put me back in! Put me back in! Here's the way the executive producer of Baby Talk was going to run the show. We were going to write scripts and the babies would perform them live in front of a studio audience every Friday night. It didn't go well. (laughs) How? He fired the babies... Because you have to have twins sure. to play one baby yeah. for the labor laws. Yeah. He fired them middle of episode three for crying. <laughs> that seems like you're making this up. I know I you're swear not, to but God, you must have been like- wh- What world am I in yeah. is what I was thinking. So how long did you were you doing? You were doing this for six, seven years? No, four or five years. And do you think it's going well? No, I think, well, well I mean, I'm, you're making money. I'm happy, you're, to, you're I'm happy to work. Yes. But the moment it starts, you, you, you start absorbing how to make a show. And this is good for people to know, I think. You can learn what you're going to have to learn about the business on any show. I agree. Right? Yeah. It doesn't have to be good. You would rather it's good. Yeah, I actually have a different theory about whether if I'm if it's not my show, yeah, I don't care if it's good. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Uh, Meaning, I don't understand why people would rather work on a Coen Brothers movie than a, a movie that's got better hours that's worse. Do you know what I mean? If it's not yours anyway, right? Yes, of course you care less when it's not yours. Yeah, but you do want to help it be good. Yes, but I think it's interesting to try to figure out what some, what a maniac thinks is good and then trying to write for that shit That's hilarious. <laughs> that a maniac thinks is quality. Have I you think done that, this a lot? I, I feel like I have. <laughs> I don't know that. I wasn't on that many. I wasn't really a staff for very long, but I'm saying like. But if you're a passenger and a guy who's driving crazy, you are afraid you're going to crash. You, you're, yes, well said. Uh, okay, so was Coach good? So I got to Coach. <laughs> coach was a and sitcom. And my partner and I. That I remember when they said that the guy who ran, who who created Everybody Loves Raymond, wrote for Coach. I was like, I don't know if that's, I would always think, I, was Coach good? I never, I don't really watch sitcoms other than yours. It I was a yours. total step up from what I had been doing. Got it. My partner and I literally said, if we're going to be on any show now like if we're gonna keep doing this we should i think at this point in our careers at least be on a show that people have heard of (laughs) and coach was a giant hit Mm -hmm. we came on in season five of that show right so they're cresting four or five yeah and we stay together on that show for two years and we'd been partners now for five years and at the end of that two years oliver and I split up amicably because after a few years, you realize you're being taken advantage of. They're paying you one salary, right? But you're two people yeah. in the room. We yeah. don't huddle before everything we say. Right. Yeah, you're getting two for one. Yeah, and for anyone starting, two for one, make yourself a two for one bargain. Yeah, for a while. Yeah, so that you can get hired at all. Yes. Okay, but after a while, now we split up. And I, I had that third year of coach on my own, and during that third year, I get the video cassette of Ray's six minute appearance on Letterman. Letterman said there should be a show for this I said guy. this repeatedly, I think I said it on here. Ray Romano did a Tonight Show, Johnny Carson, and a Letterman set yes. within six months of each other. 
and they're both perfect. Hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah, did you like it though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe and then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in. Although I'm not really used to the green screen.